2017 budget series, in defense of acting President Osin Bejo by Abdul Muman Jibran. The acting president made what, in my opinion, was a harmless remark when he observed that the National Assembly has no powers to introduce new projects in the budget. In the same statement, however, he admitted that NAS has the powers to allocate resources, as that is its core powers of appropriation. I consider his statement very objective. His tone wasn't confrontational, neither was his body language. Acting President Tosin Bejo had a day earlier signed the 2017 budget noting that there were grey areas, especially funds lifted from key projects, to introduce new projects by NAS. He further stated that he agreed to sign the budget after the assurance of commitment from NAS to restore the lifted funds. That demonstration of faith in NAS was unprecedented, and the most generous concession in budget negotiations by a president since 1999. Not one Nigerian president has ever agreed to sign the budget into law on the basis of extracting commitment from NAS to attend to outstanding issues after the budget is signed into law, the reasons being. Once the budget is signed into law, the president must implement it, whether NAS makes the correction or not. There are only two ways to achieve such corrections, supplementary budget or environment, both of which are as good as going through the entire budget process all over again, and require the executive to go the full length of lobbying and massaging the ego of NAS, a process they detest so much. 3. The unpredictable nature of the relationship between the legislature and the executive, as the state of such relationship at a particular time determines how friendly and expeditiously NAS attends to requests from the executive. This is not peculiar to Nigeria. A national daily reported today that Osinbajo's comment threatened executive. NAS environment deal but how could such a harmless statement create an uproar of such magnitude? Already an unhealthy prevailing circumstances is being created that will make the process tough and place few people in NAS to negotiate some selfish interest only beneficial to themselves. That has been the name of the game. The NAS should know that how it handles this historic concession granted it by the executive under the guide of acting President Tosin Bejo will determine the approach of the executive arm and future budget negotiation. So, the only other way to make corrections in the budget, which is not applicable in this situation, is through core agendum, a power vested in NAS to make minor corrections to the budget. There are instances where a core agendum has been used to commit budget fraud. I will discuss that and give you such instances in subsequent episodes of this series. Recall that in 2016, President Buhari returned the budget to NAS on two occasions to ensure that all the grey areas were resolved before he appended his signature. All the grey areas were resolved, and corrections too affected. In fact, this was done with an unusual tact and dutifully, out of understandable reverence, and yes fear, of President Buhari. In this case of acting President Osin Bejo, perhaps beyond the respect he enjoins, he must strive to also be feared, through resistance to compromising settlements in his relationship with NAS. The reason isn't far-fetched. All attempts to flatter and hoodwink President Buhari into signing the 2016 budget, by assuring to make corrections later, met an impenetrable brick wall. He saw through the smoke screen, and thus even refused to be blackmailed by threats of possible backlash from NAS if the budget was not signed before corrections are made and also the need to save time. On one occasion, the president said, 
If we have waited for six months, we can as well wait for weeks for NAS to correct the gray areas before I sign. That has been the pattern with successive presidents. No president was ready to take the risk with NAS but Osin Bejo did, as it appeared like striking a deal with an untrustworthy partner. Whether this seeming pact is calculated or not is left for time and the scrutiny of vigilant and critical Nigerians to determine. What is obvious, however, is that the acting president has played into the hands of NAS. What the acting president has given to NAS is a victory it has not had in the budget process since 1999, understandably to strengthen the relationship between the two frequently hostile arms of government. Osin Bejo, therefore, deserves a reciprocal gesture and unmistakable friendship from the lawmakers, not attacks and threats. This is my position. In the following episodes of this series, which we intend to run for three months, we will do a recap of the 2016 budget fraud with new revelations of facts and key actors involved. We will talk about fraud in the 2017 budget, how members of the executive arm collaborate with NAS in this venture, new strategies to beat vigilant ties, concealment, abnormality, reckless spending, budget revenue framework, and $2 extra benchmark. Also to be addressed are the N140 billion increment in budget size amidst dwindling revenues, the largest in recent years poor economics, the reformed budget process, public hearing of the budget, page-by-page -page consideration of details, core agenda, the lies, facts and half-truths of budgeting, conspiracy of a few members of NAS in the budget process against majority of the 359 members and 108 senators and, very importantly, how to stop these infractions. We look forward to beneficial engagements, for a more transparent Nigeria. Abdul Muman Jibran is a member of the Nigerian House of Representatives. You can follow him on Twitter at Abdulabnj.